there, I'm Liv and welcome back to my channel Endless Pages and welcome to today's video. So today's video, I still have no idea what I'm titling this. It's basically books that have caught me by surprise, so both in a good way and a bad way. So books that I'm really surprised that I enjoyed and I thought that they weren't going to be for me but turned out that I, I loved them. And then we're also going to have books that I was really surprised that I didn't enjoy. So let's go ahead and talk about the books. Okay, up first is a series. Um, this is a series that I haven't technically finished. I've read the first two books and will read the third book. Um, and that is the Shadow and Bone series by Lee Bardugo. I, this is a series that I'm surprised I did not like. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't really like them that much. There's a character that I love, a couple of characters that I love, and I would definitely be continuing on with the Grishaverse to see these characters later in King of Stars and um, Rule of Wolves, but yeah. I read the Six of Crows duology before I picked up these books, and after I read the Six of Crows, um, Crows duology, I was like, well now I have to read everything in this whole world and I learned about Shadow and Bone, that it was all connected, like in terms of the Grishaverse. So I was like, okay, well I have to read these books, like I'm going to love them, right? Like I love Shadow and Bone. Um, it's really heavy, I'm going to put them down. No, I found the first book super boring and it was like I was forcing myself to read this book. Um, I don't really like Alina's character, I don't like Mel, I, uh, Mel, <laughs> who the hell is Mel? I don't like Mal, uh, I don't like the Darkling, I hate how romanticised he is, he's not meant to be a romantic interest, um, and I hate that, how much he's made out to be that, I just, I find this series really boring and there's nothing about it that, like, catches my attention other than, like, two characters. Um, and they get introduced not till the second book, so I feel like I enjoyed the second book a little bit more than I enjoyed the first book. The first book was a struggle for me, and I, like, was so tempted to DNF it, and I'm, like, I'm glad I didn't, because now I know about certain characters that I enjoy. Um, and if I DNF'd it, obviously reading King of Scars would be a bit of a struggle and full of spoilers. But yeah, I I really, 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 really didn't like this book. I really struggled through it. I can't remember what I rated it, but I feel like I was too generous in my rating. It is a series that I am going to finish. I am eventually going to read Ruin and Rising, but again, I keep putting it off and ignoring it because I just, I don't want to do it. Um, I don't like the main character. I find it so painful to read from. And this is a series that I was super disappointed that I didn't love. I wanted to love everything Lee Bardugo has written, but um, yeah, that wasn't the case. So this series was a massive surprise let down for me. Let's talk in a more positive light about a book that surprised me in a good way, and that is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is a retelling of Homer's The Iliad, but from um, a boy called Patroclus' perspective. I know I butchered the pronunciation. Go please leave me alone. Um, so this is about um, Patroclus, who is a, a young prince and he is exiled from his homeland because of a, an, an act of violence. Um, he then gets sent to Achilles homeland to live in their kind of, I don't know what you'd call it, like I get, I'd just say home, to live in his home. Um, and these two start to grow uh, in a friendship. They grow up together and tr are trained by Chiron in the arts of war and medicine. But then there is word that Helen has been kidnapped and all of the Greek heroes are called to lay siege to the um, land of Troy in her honor. And of course Achilles um, goes along in this war and Patroclus, as his loyal friend goes along with him. So this is basically a love story. It's absolutely devastating and it really surprised me. I don't know if this or Percy Jackson was the first Greek um, retelling I read. It was the gr first like Greek kind of inspired thing I read. I believe it was this actually. So 
The reason I picked this up was because of hype. It was in every book talk video, like absolutely everyone that I watched at the time. It was absolutely blowing up on book talk and everyone was talking about it and everyone was quoting it and talking about how beautiful it was. And I got FOMO because I was like, well, I need to know what this is about, even though I don't think I would like it. And I bought it just because of hype. And I was like, oh man, like I'm going to regret buying this. What a waste of money. I'm going to hate it. So eventually one day I just like picked it up and like fell in love with it. This book is devastating. It is the most stunning love story and what really surprised me was that I was okay with the pacing. This book is long and the pacing is very very slow especially at the start um, especially when they're with Ch uh, Chiron. That Chiron ugh, pronunciation is off point today. Um, that period with him and training with him is very 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 long and Normally I feel like I would DNF something like that because it normally just isn't able to catch my attention and I do like faster paced things but I didn't mind the pace in this book. I thought the writing was beautiful and their relationship was enough to keep me um, interested in the story despite it yeah usually not being something that I could put up with the pace wise. So that really surprised me and I surprised me like how connected I felt to these two characters despite not having much knowledge about Greek myths I was still able to appreciate this beautiful book. Uh, the romance is like beautiful and I bawled my eyes out for the last like 50 pages of this book. Probably last 100 pages of this book to be honest I can't exactly remember but it broke me and um, as you can see by my collector's edition obviously I'm obsessed with it. Look at the end pages. Look at the end pages. They're so pretty. Uh, yeah, I was really surprised that I gave this book five stars. Um, so I guess the moral of the story is sometimes hype is correct. Back to Negative is a book that I was surprised I did not enjoy and that is Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is obviously the original vampire story so I was like I have to read it. Uh, I read this a couple of years ago because it's Dracula. Like I was like I can't be a book reader and not read this iconic book and be such a watcher of vampire shows and not have read the original story. Um, speaking of pacing, uh, nothing happens in this book. This book is so bloody boring. Nothing happens. Like, someone tell me the plot of this book. You literally, the whole book is literally, like, from, like, diary perspectives. Um, and it's just a bunch of whiny people whining. And the female characters in this book, I just don't appreciate how they're written. I don't think they're written well. I think they're written as weak and fainty and whiny and, like, um, really dependent on, like, having a man around to keep them sane. So I just, I really could not connect with this book at all. I almost DNF'd it. I forced myself to finish it. I hated this book. It was so boring. I was so underwhelmed and so, so, so disappointed that I did not enjoy this book because obviously it's Dracula and I would love to love Dracula, but I just, I couldn't. Let's go back to a positive book, a book that caught me by surprise in a good way, and that is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is about a young girl who's living in Monte Carlo. She meets a man called Maxim de Winter. Um, he's a widow and his wife, Rebecca, recently passed away. Um, they get to know each other. They start spending time together and he proposes and asks her to come back and be his wife um, at Manderley which is their family estate. But once she goes back to Manderley with him after their honeymoon she realizes that she's kind of in the shadow and kind of haunted by the ghost of Rebecca not in a literal way but in terms of um everyone loved Rebecca and Rebecca was beautiful and social and kind and the staff loved her and the town loved her so she's kind of um, constantly being reminded to and inadvertent inadvertently oh my god my speaking today is atrocious um, being compared to Rebecca um, so what really surprised me was the um, really interesting perspective reading from our main character and dealing with that constant comparison and her um, self-esteem and her view of herself and there's also a plot point that happens in this book that I didn't realize was going to happen because it's not really it's not um, it's not uh, talked about at all on the blurb and my knowledge of classics is very limited. I'm very naive when it comes to classics. I don't know much about them because I don't spend really time researching them or thinking about them. So this plot point really caught me by surprise and I was thoroughly um, 
yeah, I was thoroughly happily surprised by um, the plot point that kind of came in and it made the book all the much better. And again, like I said for, um, what book was I talking about? Oh, like I said for The Song of Achilles, um, I'm usually one to hate slow plots. Um, this was incredibly slow plot, but the writing and reading from our main character's perspective was so interesting enough that I did not care about the slow pacing of this book. Yeah, I gave Rebecca five stars and I cannot believe it. Another book that I was surprised that I did not enjoy was The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee. This is the second book in the Montego Siblings series by Mackenzie Lee. The first book, um, A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, is super fun, fast-paced, silly fun adventure, cute romance. Adored the first book. Gave it five stars. The second book is yeah was a letdown so the first book is about the eldest montagu um monty and the no not monty percy sorry um and the second book is about his sister felicity and she was kind of a side character in the first book um and i loved her character in the first book she was smart and witty and yeah i really loved the idea of a whole book around her um and seeing what she got up to after the end of the first book but this book was a letdown. I was anticipating that this was going to be a five-star read, but it wasn't. It, re it really wasn't. I found this book really... I don't know how to describe it. Like, I just didn't connect with Felicity like I connected with her in the previous book. Um, I found her kind of annoying in this book, to be honest, and in the first book, I loved her. Like, love, love, loved her. Adored her character and was so excited to see more of her. I just didn't connect with her. I didn't connect with the love interest. I thought the story was really boring and just such a letdown after the first book. I think my expectations were too high. I don't know. I feel like I loved the first book so much that I went in this went into this book with the attitude like, yeah, I'm going to adore this book. But I really didn't. I was so disappointed with what they did to Felicity as a character and I just felt like it really, really fell flat for me. Um, I do have the third book that's recently published this year, I think. It's called The Nobleman's Guide to Shipwrecks and Scandals. This is the third book in the series and follows the youngest Montague sibling. So I'm really, really hoping that this book brings the series back together for me and I can gets it back on track. And I really hope that it is better than this one because this one was so disappointing um, and I don't want to this to be a series that I hate and I only like the first book so I hope the third series can bring back my love for Felicity as a character and the series in general. We're gonna end this uh, video on a negative note and this is a book that I was very very surprised that I just can't get into the series and that is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So this is obviously, we'll disconnect it from the author, obviously one of the biggest most popular fantasy series fantasy series ever a beloved series for so many people such a place of comfort and nostalgia and a world that people I think will always love no matter how old you were when you read these books and how old you are now I know that this is such a special book for so many people I don't know if it's because I'm reading this book now as a 23 year old maybe if I had read this book during that peak period as, as a child when it was intended for me to read it and grow up with this series I might have a different opinion on them. I mean this series is right up my alley. It's such a fun fantasy world of um, you know young children fighting and saving the world and fighting villains. I like I love that trope but it's just something I really can't get into and I um, was recently trying to read I Got Up to the Goblet of Fire, but I just DNF'd it. I can't, I can't get into it. I can't tell you why. I'm just really not connecting with the characters. I'm not connecting with the plot. And I don't think it is my opinion on JK Rowling that is um, affecting it. Like, I'm separating the two, obviously. But I just, I can't get into this series, and I cannot tell you why. I'm not enjoying it. I keep putting down the books. Um... I keep avoiding putting them on TBRs because I was like, I'll read the whole series and then I'll read, read the movies. I think I'll enjoy the movies. I've seen bits and pieces, obviously, of the movies and I just feel like I would rather watch them than read the books, which is not something I would normally say for a series like this. I, yeah, I still cannot tell you why 
I don't like this series. I just, it's not for me, which is really surprising because it's, you know, a beloved fantasy series. But yeah, this is one that really, I'm really surprised that I can't get into and I don't think I will uh, pick Goblet of Fire back up. I don't think I'll continue this series. So there we have it. Books that have surprised me in both a good way and a bad way. So many books in this list that I expected to love and didn't and books that I expected to not love and ended up loving. Let me know in the comments below what are books that have surprised you in a good way and books that have surprised you in a bad way, meaning you didn't enjoy them and you expected to. I am participating in Vader, so I am attempting to post a new video every day for the month of April, which is now starting to prove difficult, but anyway, we're going to soldier through. So subscribe, and then you won't miss a video from me all month. All of my social media links are in the description below. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I suppose I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!